Now, this was a little bit of a troll from me to friends because I know friends has stated numerous times how he hates these movies. I don't know how far he's gotten in the series, um, but I know he hates these movies. Hence why I know, or I know he has not seen uh, tonight's movie, hence why I chose it and I decided it's going to be the first of three Leprechaun film discussions. But to cut a long story short, tonight we're going to discuss Leprechaun Origins. A lot of people are wondering, well, probably wondering why the fuck, you know, we're talking Leprechaun Origins and not Warwick Davis, or at least the, the 1993 original. Because, like I said, Frenzy fucking hates those movies, and he's never seen Leprechaun Origins. Um, <laughs> which has nothing to do with those movies. Um, long story short, I watched this for my channel. And I put it in the Is It Worth the Hate playlist where I take a film that is hated by the masses or just by fans in general. Um, and I decide, in my opinion, is it worth the hate? And I decided after watching it, it wasn't. It wasn't worth like the 10% rating it got on whatever IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes or whatever it was. I didn't think it was an abortion or an abomination or all that crap that people just pulled out of the source when they were trying to do their YouTube reviews. Um, we'll get into it, but I ended up really enjoying this, and I will say why. Frenzy, how much did you hate this movie? I would disagree with them as well. I what it, you said is ten percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yes, I think it should be zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> oh, so I disagree with the haters. They don't they don't hate it enough, in my opinion. I I'll never say this again. I I can't believe I'm saying it right now. I, I've never been so desperate for a Warwick Davis leprechaun in my life. I've never, there's never, I've never been watching something I'm like, God, I wish I was watching the Warwick Davis leprechauns wow. ever. And I was thinking that the whole time. And it's not like, uh, it's not one of these bad movies like, um, what's like, what's, what's a bad straight to DVD kind of horror thing? It's worse than that. Really? It's worse because it played in a the movie theater. I remember when this came out. And just because of did the WWE, the yes, it did. It, it may have. It Maybe did very play briefly. The I remember because it was just because it had the WWE attachment. It's worse than a straight to DVD movie um, or Netflix or or Redbox because that's a dollar or it's free. It comes with subscription. <laughs> this was a scam that was perpetrated on the masses. Then I re I just happen to be a person who dislikes Leprechaun. And you think I'm just talking about Warwick Davis? I'm not just talking about Warwick Davis. I love Warwick Davis. I hate leprechauns, period. Oh, I okay. hate St. Patrick's Day. I hate the Irish. I hate like the country <laughs> and the people and the music and the culture and their traditions and their, their folklore. I hate everything about them. So leprechauns is just one of many things that I hate, but uh, especially related to horror movies. Um, yes, I hate leprechaun movies. This one played in theaters. It, it has a wrestling attachment to it, which makes mm -hmm. it even worse. Because uh, I've I've never seen one of those that didn't make me want to vomit. I remember seeing oh. uh, Raising Cane, oh, which yeah, I thought was, was oh, whatever that. Yeah, is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah, that was ludicrous. Um, oh, I like that one. Oh well, well that'll that'll probably come up. But what about the one with um, the uh, they were? It was like Kevin Nash. It was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. They were Foster like Ball. they were like ghost pirates. Ghost pirates. Yes. It I had. Um, it was, uh, well. Oh my god! You haven't. There, I know a wrestling horror movie you haven't seen. Well, not with ghost pirates. Kevin Nash was in a movie called Monster Brawl, where it was like Mortal Kombat with no different. I've creatures. seen that. I, okay. I used to watch um, wrestling horror movies for that was my tradition on Halloween. Mm -hmm. I'd watch one bad one for years in a row this one is called it's on a river and it's um who's the guy with the even smaller head than john cena he's bald he he looks like one of the koopa troopas from super mario brothers the movie like giant tiny head i wish i knew these modern wrestler names. it doesn't matter he's like a he's like a sheriff and um a couple of these other wrestlers are pirate ghost things you don't know what I'm talking about. No, you better find out. 
Oh my god, you love it. If you like this movie, dude, you will actually like this one. Um, so what were we talking? I guess long story short, I did not like this movie. And yeah, you, you were you were, talking about how, you were talking about how you saw that WWE films was involved, and that's how you knew it was gonna be garbage, basically. Well, not necessarily. I just I just uh, I remember at the time when it was playing in the movie theater, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, not one of those things. And what's really funny, we'll get to this a little bit. I, I, my nephew watched it with me, and he told he was begging me not to watch it. He's like, "Oh no, Uncle Ali, not that one, not with the, the not the naked leprechaun. It's dumb." He's like, "It's the worst one. Don't watch it." Oh no! And I was like, "Stop telling me stuff about it. I want to watch this." And uh, he's like, "No, you won't. Trust me. This one's bad. He he doesn't talk, and he he's not a leprechaun." And I was like, "Shut up!" And then. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you some of his comments at the end when we get to the end. Please do. Because it's like the funniest shit he's ever said. He wasn't even trying to be funny. <laughs> oh, God. Well, the, to get into it, um, this was, I guess, this was WWE Films, um, and I think it was Lionsgate. They wanted to reboot the series um, because there hasn't been a Leprechaun movie in theaters since part two. And I think that was like 1994 or five or something. I don't, I don't know the year this came out. I will have the the year in the description for this movie, but um, 2014. Okay, 2014. And WWE films did have some hits: The Marine, See No Evil, The Condemned with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which I really liked. The Marine um, is amazing. Like for bad action movies, yeah, I loved it. That was one of my favorites. That that one has the T, the Terminator is the bad guy. Yeah, T-1000, yeah. Holy shit, that one's fantastic. And what they did is um, they wanted to totally reboot this. Everyone forget about Warwick Davis. And there was red flag number one for horror fans because, you know, sacrilege and all that stupid shit that they complain about <laughs> when, there's a, when there's a remake. That shit just bugs me, man, you, you, when you judge a movie before you fucking see it. Um, I don't do it very often. I only do it with things I already hate. Like if I hate the idea, that's fine, but I can't say the movie's gonna be crap until I see it. Like, yeah, this was. I mean, you remember though? I I remember vividly when the trailer for this came out. It was a big deal. That was back when. It's only six years ago. That's when um, premiere trailer premieres online were mm-hmm. were really hot. It was a big deal. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, here comes this new Leprechaun. It's gonna be weird. And I remember the trailer being. It's just not. It's not anything like the other leprechaun you know what i mean like that those are fun they have a sense of humor this was like super serious and and i was i was all for that and and like like frenzy says this is (laughs) this is taken in a air quote serious route we're following two couples they're actually in ireland which is cool a leprechaun movie actually takes place in ireland um and i is it really in ireland yeah they really filmed in ireland why like you can't tell Fuck if it, I know. It, it could be <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> but uh, we're fo- we're following two group two couples, and I don't know why they're backpacking across Ireland. It, that doesn't matter. And they end up at a bar, and they meet some guy, and uh, they're saying they're going from here to there. And of course, he gives them a ride, and they end up at this shack, and they're terrorized by the leprechaun. And you find out, you know, through. Um, different stages of the movie that this like like your nephew said it's not the same leprechaun this is the naked one that runs around um this leprechaun which and one of the reasons why i liked it we'll get into it is from old irish folklore it's a cave creature and um they're being stalked because this the town used to be a mining town and they found eventually they, the miners found the leprechaun's gold stole it and then the of course the leprechaun cursed the town and now they have to sacrifice um victims to the leprechaun until the debt is repaid blah 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 um and then the rest of it is these four people trapped in a house trying to escape this this feral creature and hilarity ensues um what's the first thing you hate about this frenzy and we'll work on that, and then I'll I'll say what I like. The first thing I, I like about it. honestly, I don't I don't really hate it. I hate the uh, I hate the war with. It's like I, I remember I try not to to be like this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to you know be positive. It's funnier when I hate on stuff, but I really don't sit around well, thinking about 
You can the be war you, you, How about this? What's the first thing you dislike? We'll take the word hate out of it. Oh, well, I do. Uh, let's just be honest. Let's cut the shit. I hate it. <laughs> okay, I, I do hate this movie. I'm going to get over it. But it's more, it's actually just fun listening to you talk about how much you like it. it I mean, mm -hmm. this conversation I thought was going to be torture. It's actually already better than the movie. <laughs> and I'm not joking. It's like I got coffee, energy drink. I'm kind of like feeling the buzz. Mm -hmm. Already better than the movie. The first thing <laughs> I hate, obviously is that there's no color in this movie like they, they're already it's already pretentious anyway which the, oh. like that's an oxymoron a pretentious wrestling movie with a leprechaun in it um why not just make it black and white if you're going to drown out all of the fucking color out of this movie by washing it out to 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 try to make your movie like edgy and look scary why not just make it black and white like a throwback to the old you know 40s and 50s movies so Right there, that's strike one. It looks like a. It looks like someone shot a movie through a dirty window screen. Really? That's what it looks like. A... I just watched the Blu-ray. I'll give I'll give you that. Um, the nighttime stuff is hard to see a lot. Um, oh, that's and, not that and... bad. It's not as bad as you'd think, though. That no, the it's daytime not. stuff is uh, It's all ugly. Really, I thought the daytime stuff looked looked nice. I love the, the 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 nature shots looked really well. I thought you know that was fine. I will say this: the nighttime stuff is hard to see because of how dark it is, and that does encompass maybe fifty percent of the movie is at nighttime. And we're going to get into how the Leprechaun looks, obviously, because this is not Warwick Davis. This is not the guy that was in Leprechaun Returns. Um, like I said, this is a feral creature, and. Its skin, from what I can tell and what I've seen in actual pictures and from what I can see in the film itself, the skin is like either a light blue or a gray, grayish white tone because this is a cave creature. A lot of the shots at dark do make it hard to see. Plus, a lot of the times, you know, it's just quick cuts on the screen. Well, look, but... I, honestly, you're talking about two different things, okay? Mm -hmm. the, the nighttime stuff is not that bad. I mean, I've seen a thousand times worse than this. Mm -hmm. You're talking about composition-wise, like with the nature shots and things like that. That's what's so surprising about this movie, even though it's really bad. Like composition-wise, the people mm -hmm. know what they're doing. They know mm -hmm. where to put the camera. Everything's framed right. It, it's mm -hmm. made well in that way. The color timing and the lighting and stuff is it's completely washed out. I mean, there's no, there's very little color in it. Kind of like Saving Private Ryan. Mm. That was made on purpose to look old fashioned so that uh, it accentuates the blood, which I guess that's what they're going for. Because when you do that, it makes the reds really pop. And the mm. bloody shit in this movie is really bloody. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just saying it's ugly. The movie's ugly. Mm. Well, then I guess if that's how you're going to explain it, I guess I didn't notice. You yeah. Know? Maybe, but maybe, but see, that's how you and I look at films differently in that respect. Well, like you're, and I, I think it, it, it does make sense with what they were going for because there really mm -hmm. isn't a leprechaun in this movie. It's really just an orc from Lord of the Rings, or I would say a less interesting cave monster from The Descent. Well, that's what I said. I, I once said this was like um, if the, the, the creatures from The Descent hooked up with the um there's an episode of tales from the crypt with steven weber and he ends up having to deal with like these ghoulish creatures i'm pretty sure you remember the episode all these homeless people are mysteriously dying and you find out there's this secret uh society of underground ghouls that are that are eating them and killing them i, I know remember. you've seen it i'll send you the link it's like if one of the sent creatures hooked up with one of the the ghoul creatures from that episode and out popped a baby it would be this this little thing um, we'll get right into it. I really like this take on the leprechaun creature. I like how it is like a take on a um an Irish folklore creature, and they call it something. I don't know what its technical term is, but I was I did actually Wikipedia it. That is an actual creature from Irish folklore. Um, so I always I thought that was cool. Like someone actually quote unquote did their homework. For this type of film you know what i mean you know who expected like that shit to be true 
Well, they um, got high and read Wikipedia. <laughs> you call that doing funny. homework. I like how this is a feral cave creature. They tried their best to make it quote unquote scary. 100% different from, you know, Warwick Davis, you know, with lightsabers in space and, you know, fucking around in the hood and hanging out with Elvis at, in Vegas and all that shit. They wanted to make this creature quote unquote scary. When you actually see the creature, I think the makeup looks really good. I watched the behind the scenes stuff on, on the Blu ray. And um, I don't think you're that much of a wrestling guy, at least from this era. The Leprechaun is played by a midget wrestler who went by the name of Hornswoggle. So that's the connection to WWE films, because WWE films always has a wrestler thrown in there somewhere. Um, Hornswoggle's probably, he's under four feet tall. His gimmick was being a, a, a leprechaun. You know, he would hang out under the ring and then chase people and yell and snarl. But what I like Very is... Hilarious. He's he's he is the stereotypical dwarf. He's got the really short nubby legs. But if you see this leprechaun, you see it's it kind of walks like it's hunching. It's got long, longer legs than you would expect from a leprechaun, but they're bent. And what I thought was cool is Hornswoggle's wearing like green screen pants. And they have the legs like the, he's got a bodysuit and a mask. He's got the legs hanging down. He's got the legs that kind of like bent out and taped to his feet so he's walking normally but it looks like this the creature is kind of like you know crawling Weird. you know walking on his hind legs it's really really cool um that is cool i like how it's cursed this town because the greed of the the miners you know caused this they have to sacrifice you know, people for some stupid reason to appease, you know, this leprechaun. Um, I like how right away, you know, these, these, this, these couples are bait. You know, I don't know the dude's name. I remember, I think in my video, I called him like Seamus or something because it's a typical name. Um, we take them to this cabin and your first red flag is the door. There's the locks on the outside. So, you know, they're, they're, they're bait. And then you see, he puts his, his, um, his Rolex, his gold Rolex, he just hangs it on like one of the beams outside. So that's the bait because the leprechaun wants gold. And I just like that idea of them being bait. These guys know what they're doing to bring this creature in. Um, and a lot, you know, when we finally get to see this fucking creature do its thing, I like the chaos it causes. Um, the action is really good. You know, when they're trying to escape the house, the door is dead bolted, this and that. Um, and they're escaping on the truck and it's on the top of the truck and it's, it's trying to get in. When they use this leprechaun finally, and it's not just, you know, you've seen the weeds, you know, go back and forth, you know, as it's running through. I really liked it. I liked how, I mean, I'm a fan of the Warwick Davis stuff, the goof, goofy, stupid shit, but I liked this 180. You know, I thought it was a, I don't want to say an improvement, but I always like when a long, how would you say, a series that has been ingrained in the genre for so long does a 180. Jason goes to hell, you know. That's That was a total 180 plus more, you know what I mean? I love when, when series does that. And I, I love what they did with this creature. I love how it's a feral cave creature. I'm struggling. <laughs> I appreciate your love for this. Um, I would say, first now, I don't of all... Love now, I don't love the movie. I love what they've done with this creature. I guess. There's a difference. First of all, the the midget actor, I feel sorry. I felt sorry for him once I realized what the suit... I had heard through the grapevine things when they were when this movie came out about how bad it was i was thinking he was going to be more like a little caveman or something but mm -hmm. that's part of the tragedy of this character it's not really a character it's just a monster i feel mm -hmm. sorry for the the midget wrestler actor mm -hmm. because you can't tell that there's a person under there it's so right. it covers all of his face and like yeah. you can He's really straining to show his eyes in scenes. Mm -hmm. I just kind of felt sorry for him because um, 
he he didn't get a chance. It could have been anyone under there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they're just using him for name recognition, I guess. Mm. Well, see, you know what it is, and I thought I think it was like you know, it's not just that it was you know a one eighty. I know I've I've used that term like three or four times already in this in this uh, episode. But maybe it's not just that. Maybe it's more like a breath of fresh air, because we've had oh god six films of Warwick doing his shtick, and Warwick knew exactly what he was in since part one, and he he did his shtick and he did it well. But we've had him in space, we've had him in Vegas, we've had him in the hood twice. Um, I mean, the last two movies I, we've seen him, you know, hit, taking hits off of bongs and smoking weed and this and that. It was a breath of fresh air to see something new, to see an actual creature. And I've always I've always been maybe it's also because I'm kind of a sucker for people stuck in one place trying to escape, you know, that outside force trying to get in. Well, you know what you're a sucker for, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> because you're better at this than I am. You're better at watching movies, especially franchise things, with tunnel vision. Is what you mm. do. Honestly. You watch it. Complete tunnel vision. You're completely dedicated to the individual film, the newest one. I just can't watch it like that because you're saying you appreciated all of the. Uh, what? Wait, what did you say exactly? I said it was a breath of fresh air because breath of left... fresh air. Yeah. Because of all the differences, I think it's not because it's just the. You said it's like you. We've had six Leprechaun movies of the same shit. This to me is we've had six thousand horror movies mm-hmm. of the same shit, or however we've seen in our lifetime, and this is just another one. They're just mm-hmm. calling it Leprechaun Origins, and I think that there is something to that. Um, what the stuff that you like about it, the the true mm-hmm. Irish folklore thing. I just wish that it would have been made by different people, or you know <laughs> what I'm saying. I think there you <laughs> might be able to do something with that, so it's not. It doesn't need to be 100% just a creature, and it doesn't need to be a fucking Warwick Davis slinging puns. Maybe something in the middle. I don't know. There's something to it. I just thought, <laughs> right out the gate, it's just this kind of depressing drudge of a movie for me. And then Henry Bowers, <laughs> Henry Bowers pulls up in the pickup truck. That should have been the first red flag. Well, I was going to say, um, are you talking about the son, right? His, yeah, the son his, look, his, his he does look like Henry Powers from Chapter Two, doesn't he? Isn't it him? I don't know. It, it sure has to like be. Him. Oh, that's him. I'm gonna look. I should have looked that. I mean, I didn't look it up because I was just like, no, that's totally him. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, he's okay in this. He he really shines in it Chapter Two because he's so fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I do like that confrontation they have at the end after I think two people have already been killed, or at least the first girl has been killed. Um, there's that confrontation between the dad and the son, and they got the son. Henry pulls a gun on his dad. He's telling him how this is wrong and this and that. And I liked seeing him stand up to his father because you know it was coming. And then that that that's kind of like. <laughs> Maybe I did, like I said, maybe I got the tunnel vision or however you want to say it. I thought that was like a really cool kind of a hero moment in this movie where he's doing what he can to save these, I don't want to call them kids. They're fucking, you know, our age or a little bit younger. Well, they're, you know probably, I mean? oh, they're always supposed to be younger than they're. Yeah. But I really liked that moment of him and his dad going at it. And um, I just thought it was a. a Powerful is not the right word. It is not a powerful scene. There are no powerful <laughs> scenes in Leprechaun Origins, but you know what I'm talking about. I thought there was a really good scene with the the kid, kid Henry Bowers, whatever, standing up to his dad and saying, hey, we got to stop. This is wrong. Well, I like how he tumbles down the stairs and obviously <laughs> breaks his legs, or he breaks his legs or his back. He can't move. And then mm-hmm. <laughs> the son's like, run, dad. Yeah. And he's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Laying there <laughs> as the leprechaun eats him. Yeah. Um, what else? I, I like, the, like you mentioned, the gore is pretty good for the most part in this. Yeah, it is. Um, we have uh, so we ha- the only one, the only scene of gore, which I thought was horrible. And that's because the budget was like, you know, six dollars and 50 cents 
was when someone gets their i think it's the boyfriend that's not the freddie versus jason guy not uh brandon fletcher he, he's the one that gets his spine ripped out and yeah. his spine it's just pure plastic you know halloween store bought you know spine um that looked like shit but when uh brendan fletcher gets his chest clawed that looks pretty good i think when the girl gets her the earring ripped out of her ear that was a cool tension building scene because she's sitting next to the fucking fireplace she's got a gold earring and this this director was smart the way he filmed it he's focusing on the chimney well while well, she's sitting there so you know there's leprechauns coming down the chimney leprechauns coming down the chimney when's the leprechaun coming down the chimney and finally leprechaun comes down the chimney he grabs her ear and yanks it and it looks really cool it's a it's kind of like a, a wincing moment i thought because you know that's how i am it's like with with to me ears like teeth fingers that type of stuff makes me wince so that got me the tongue ring scene got me i thought that was done really well um so yeah i thought the gore was pretty darn good in this i, I expected it to be a lot worse and i was pleasantly surprised other than that cheap ripped out spine and then when the leprechaun was killed i thought that was done pretty cool and she even threw in that whole fuck you lucky charms line from the first one so there was kind of a cool nod you know back to, to the first is that one what even, that though is? I, even though i yeah even though i hate the fucking kid from the first movie cuz that's what he says when he shoots the the bubble gum that's wrapped in the four leaf clover into warwick davis's mouth he says fuck you lucky charms you know that's the hero quote or whatever yeah but she says that so that was kind of a cool callback but the gore is really good i think the gore is just, it's good enough, I think. And okay, it, good it, it does the job. But that's it, like, for me, as far as everything else, not good enough. I, we, fi- I kinda, we, we finally I like get it. a decent performance out of Brendan Fletcher. You know, he's Uva Bowl's uh, go-to guy. He's probably in, like, four or five of his films. He's horrible in almost every single one of them. He's one of the worst <clears throat> characters in Freddy versus Jason in a and that's a film full of garbage characters <laughs> unless it's Freddy and Jason. So that's got to say something. This is probably his his best acting other than when he's trying to be tar- when he's acting like a retarded monkey in Freddy versus Jason. So that's yeah, got to count for something. I'm sure he's not even really acting though in this movie. He's just being himself. That's like yeah. I don't know I, I didn't do any research or anything but I think a big problem with this movie is the director. It's like he's got a lot of good ideas, but he just didn't execute them well enough. Like the the first thing you have to focus on, if you're making a horror movie where everyone's stuck in the same place, which is, you know, that's a classic trope. Yeah. You have to have inventive dialogue. Your your characters have to have some personality. They're not they're all the same. That um you got two assholes the main chick who's a, who's like a, a like a she's she has puppy love with this douchebag and wants mm-hmm. to go live with him and he obviously doesn't love her anymore they're both yeah, that's true. and then the other two are just like kind of like whores is there more than that was there more than four people no there's just two couples you had the yeah the main girl like what she's like she, they're backpacking because she's like writing a book or something she's getting her I master's think... in history that's it and um She's married. She's not married. She's she's dating, like you said, like the douchebag, because they do bring up that they're having problems, um, especially like after the leprechaun's attacking them. And then she throws a line like, why didn't you come back for me or some shit like that? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so he's unlikable. The other friend, the hot chick. Well, they're both pretty, but I'll call the other one the hot chick. The one with the, the earring and the tongue ring. Yeah. Who gets to who has a great death. Who has, you got to admit her death was good with the axe. Um, yeah, that was the I, best one. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming. Um, she's fine. She's just a party girl. She, but she's not to me the annoying stereotypical woo party girl. You know what I mean? She's she's there to have fun and bang uh, Brennan Fletcher, and he's I think likable in this because he's the one that tries to ease the tension between the main couple. You know, he's like, oh, okay, you know, yeah, okay, you guys are gonna fight. Let's go have, you know, the, another Guinness or whatever the fuck they were drinking at that bar type of thing. So he, I thought, was likable. Yeah. 
I it's not. I don't even think any of them were unlikable. Even the douchebag is. It, he's just like he. It, how can you hate someone for falling out of love with their girlfriend? That's just that happens. Mm-hmm. It's not his fault. He's just kind of an asshole. Uh, the this is the difference and why you're better at this. I honestly just. I, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. <laughs> It's not good enough. Like, I'm sorry. This this movie, like, we can we can talk about all the aspects of it, but the writing wise, get some help. You need some. It needs a flavor, personality. I. It's like this was. It's one of these movies. Like, it really doesn't matter who the director was because there's no he. Had, there's no personality to it whatsoever. I mean, I know he likes horror movies, but mm-hmm. I can't. Re- I can't remember. The last time, good or bad, that I saw a horror movie that has less person has less personality than this movie. You know what I mean? These well, characters are completely forgettable. There's no, there's, there's barely any set pieces. I, I don't get it. You bring that up, okay? That was kind of like your one of your problems with last week with Friday the Thirteenth Seven. Which characters do you think are worse? Because you said neither of them are memorable. Well, would you put or would you put them in like the same category as like? The Friday the Thirteenth Seven characters. No, the they're the Friday Thirteenth character. The actors are better actors. Oh. Like the, but that doesn't mean I like them more. They, I would. I think you've asked me this before in another way, a, a different about like which movie's better. The Friday Thirteenth. I like them more because they're in a better movie. Oh, okay. You know, and, I, and I did. T- I did tell you um, last week after we were we were offline or off camera. When you were wanting to make sure that we were watching Origins, I said, go into it with a, did you, and did you do it? Did you go in with like a, a clean slate? Like I said, because it has nothing to do yes. with the pre films. Cause I, like I knew, I knew you hated the hood movies. Cause I, I think shit, when we first started talking to each other and uh, you mentioned how you hated the, the Leprechaun, the Leprechaun movies in general, you said you really wanted to punch Warwick Davis in the face for doing the hood films. Yeah. It's, he's such a piece of shit for doing those. <laughs> like I, he didn't need the money. I, they're not. I don't understand. They're just. Well, we'll get into that some other time, I guess. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I was, I was disappointed. Now in 2020, having seen a lot of these WWE movies, mm-hmm. oh, I think it's called River of Darkness. It just popped in my head. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. I'm write that it. down. It's it's called River of Darkness. Okay. <laughs> I will look for that. It's uh, I can't believe you haven't seen that. Oh, well, Kevin oh. Kevin Nash is in like three or four movies a, a year. He's like, just it's, like Stone Cold Steve Austin, he does anything with a script. But Kevin Nash usually does more schlocky shit. Oh, I think you're gonna love that one. Um, and I remember I did a review for that too. It's like, um, I didn't hate that one as much because the movie was made by like just some rich guy who's never he just decided one day. Um, I'm gonna buy a couple cameras and make a horror movie with my favorite wrestlers. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. it looks like someone shot it, you know, like in their hometown. And yeah. um, when you say so, that, that makes me think of a uh, pro wrestlers versus zombies. You ever see that one? Yes, I think yeah. I. I don't know if you we were friends then when you recommended me that, but I, 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 I told you about it. I don't remember if you ever saw it. Yes, I, I did watch it, and I posted a review on. Uh, Twitter, and the director commented on it. Oh no, shit, that's cool. Yeah, he was like, uh, "Sorry about that, but you know, it, I I said how much it, how horrible it was, but I still enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Like as bad fun." And he was like, "Fuck yeah, man! Sorry, it was so bad." He was like apologizing. See, that's cool though. Yeah, you that know, guy's super nice. Yeah, like him, and I always I always bring back uh, Jason goes to hell. Him and Adam Marcus. Um, they know their faults with their films, but they're they're just so cool about it. I mean, I, I like that. Okay. But, Speaking of that, what would you do? <laughs> what would you tweet to the director of this film, Leprechaun Origins? Would it be worse than what you tweeted uh, to the director of uh, Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies? No, but the, the difference is Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies and River of Darkness are like it's they're not really like real movies they're like hobbies you know mm-hmm. what i mean like just these yeah. rich guys who decide they want to make a movie one day yeah. this guy who made whoever made this movie um and it was obviously like focus grouped this is like a big decision uh, that a mm-hmm. lot of people had their hand in the pot in this movie and um just think it's unfortunate that 
stuff like this gets released in the theaters and that there's no quality control, I, I don't understand it. <laughs> Why not go that extra step? Mm-hmm. You know, you're the WWE, you're giving them millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Then how about read the script? You know, yeah. give it to someone like anyone, uh, like as a favor, or reach out to uh, <coughs> Eli, Eli Roth or Quentin Tarantino yeah. or um, the guy who made Feast or uh, the pedophile who made Jeepers Creepers or all these other movies I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dude, a- Alexander Aja. Yeah. Who made High Tension. Oh, like, I have loved every single film of his. You know, I still got to see Crawl, though. Oh yeah, crawl's cool. It's crawl's like it's not. Don't I was surprised because it's not a horror movie. It's a survival mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. So if you go in thinking it's a survival movie, which it is, it's not really yeah. a horror movie. It's a great. Right. Sur- it's fantastic. I'm saying like, let him help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I would I would pay to see a uh, a Leprechaun Origins by uh, Aja. I think I think he would. Oh no shit! Would... Or like I was saying, the fees guy. Or the hatchet guy, any of these people. Yeah. I was, you know, he's Alexander Aja's big deal. Like he does big budget things now. I, I was thinking Feast and Hatchet because those are so schlocky. Yeah, Adam, Adam Green did Hatchet and he's still pretty low budget. He's only done a few films that I know of outside of the Hatchet series. Um, I have a blast with the Feast trilogy. I think they go. I've only seen the first one. Oh, well. Oh, I loved it. You were, oh man, two well, and three are so fucking off the rails. It's you insane. were. Saying, that's what happened on our last show. You were talking about um, Hatchet, and uh, you started talking about the sequels. I've only seen the first one. Hatchet two, good in the beginning. Exposition is boring as fuck. Great third act. Three is a lot of fun. I haven't seen the fourth one. Okay. So. Yeah. First is still the best, I would say. Same with the Feast movies. The Fe- Feast one is just flat out fun. Don't know what's going to happen. The second one is, holy shit, I can't believe they did that. And they did that. And Naked Midgets and Luchadors and Biker Chicks and this and that. Um, and then the third one is, I can't even, I'm not even going to attempt to explain what happens in the third one. But they are the whole trilogy is a lot of fun. That's, the, that's what we're talking about those movies instead of this one. It's like... <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what to feel. I don't know what to say. It's just like this is so weird when you when you pull something like this. I think yeah. the last time it was um, the only other time you did this to me was Big Money Hustlers. Big Money Hustlers. It's like okay. I just have this empty feeling, like I'm I'm out of my element. I'm like Donnie in the Big Lebowski. <laughs> okay, where would you put this compared to Big Money Hustlers? Above or below? I would put Big Money Hustles way above this because at least oh, really? that... Oh, yeah, because at least that movie is, like, offensive. You know what I mean? <laughs> in it, a good way, right? In a good way. Well, any no, I, there is no bad way. Uh, you can't right. offend me. Right. There's no such thing, unless it's just, like, straight up uh, racist or something. Watch Feast 2, and we'll see if you can get offended or not. You think so? I don't know what your limits are, dude. No, I don't think I don't think you can offend me. I mean, like um, torture porn maybe, stuff. It's not like it offends me. It's like maybe it's a, a way. Maybe maybe offend is too strong of a word, but yeah, there's there's a couple scenes that I don't know how you would react to in a uh, in Feast Two, but I guess on that note, there isn't really much left to talk about. I don't know how if this is going to be a short episode or not. Um, but. I, in the end, I still personally really enjoy Leprechaun Origins. I don't think it's worth the hate it gets. Not just, you know, with Frenzy here, but with all these people that are saying it's like a slap in the face to the other movies. Oh, fuck off with (laughs) that. Slap in the face to, he's been in the hood, he's been in space, like I said, all that stupid shit. That's insane. Stop it. You're, You're holding these, you know. Love these films. There's nothing wrong with loving the Leprechaun films, the for whatever ones, you know. But come on, stop it. When you say it slaps the face of like the legacy and all this stuff, no, stop it. Um, that's just it just that's just, you know, going from fan to fanatic, in my opinion. But um, I like the gore, I like some of the characters. I love what they've done with this leprechaun character, the change in it. I love, like I said, I love Henry, we're calling him Henry Bowers. I love him and you know, his his conflict with his father. 
other than that, that stupid cheap uh, spine rip, I love the gore in this, the way the leprechaun is taken out. I still don't understand the whole deal with that big giant rock we didn't talk about. That's like in the middle of the in the middle of the the field, and it's got like Gaelic writings on it. And the leprechaun can't get past that or something. They don't explain that, I don't think. But I have a lot of fun with this movie. At first, when I first saw it, I'm like, okay, do maybe I just like it because everyone else hates it. Because sometimes I tend to do that. I rewatched it. I still have fun. I still enjoy it. Um, I like some of the tension. Yeah, I, I. This is one of the better. No, I won't say. Yeah, well, I'll say it's better than the first Hood movie for sure because that's pure garbage, and it's better than Part Two because the only reason to watch Part Two is for the drunken Uncle Morty. I don't know if you remember that character uh, frenzy, but so it's definitely yeah. not the bottom of the barrel. I um, forgot those on purpose. Okay. Um, yeah, you got any any final thoughts before we, I guess we end this for your sake? <laughs> no, it's fun. This is actually fun talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say before my final wrap up, that are you sure this was made in Ireland? I'm pretty sure they filmed some of it in Ireland. Maybe because, not all of it. Maybe maybe they just filmed like the 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 outside scenes in Ireland. Because what a waste of like going over to a different country. It just seems like they made it in like Alabama or something. Uh, that's that's Vince McMahon. He just throws money away. True. Well, you know, he I'll was, say he was, bank, he was banking on the Leprechaun name, so that's well, why he really didn't care. Because you know, say what you will about these films, they do have a cult following, which is like a lot, another reason why I think a lot of fans hated this movie before it came out. But he he was banking on the the cult phenomena, I guess you would say, of this series. And that's does, probably why he just threw the, the money away to go film some stuff in Ireland. Does Vince McMahon still own the wrestling stuff? Is yeah. he still the president? Yeah, he's still the owner. Okay, well, here's my advice to Vince McMahon, the billionaire <laughs> co- creator of WWF, and now it's WWE. Mm-hmm. I would say, if you're listening, Vince, <laughs> make some fucking wrestling movies. Honestly. They don't make those anymore, for the most part. You know, I really love that. Did you ever watch the one I told you? Wrestling with my family? No, not yet. Fucking loved it. Horrible title. That's why I almost didn't go see it, because it has a fucking horrible movie title. Turned out to be one of my my favorite movies of the year. Yeah, that was a WWE produced film. Yeah, well, (laughs) that was made by, like, real filmmaker. This is different. Stick to (laughs) wrestling movies. Do some crazy, like, over-the-top Sylvester Stallone, uh, that kind of, like, throwback 80s style. Just do anything other than horror movies or action stuff. It's embarrassing. It's fucking embarrassing, especially <laughs> the stuff John Cena's in. Like, if you haven't if you haven't seen 12 Rounds, you haven't lived. I'll I've just seen say 12, that right now. I've seen 12 Rounds. I'm a Rennie Harlan fan. I didn't really like 12 Rounds at all. Yeah, and that's coming from a guy who really enjoyed Rennie Harlan's film Cutthroat Island. I know. I like all Rennie Harlan movies. Yeah. I like him. Uh, you know, I've had a crush on Gina Davis since I was a kid. So the fact mm-hmm. that he, like, married her, yeah, that's huge bonus points, no yeah. matter how shitty his movies are. Like, there he makes shitty action movies that are a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but seriously, Vince... Um, Make some more wrestling movies. Don't do shit like this. And, you know, I'm just being honest about this. Because mm-hmm. I got nothing yeah. else to say. If I were to rate a movie based on, you know, some people do it just based on their gut. Some people do it like a hundred point system. Every little thing, rate it one to five and then add up an average or whatever. No matter what I did, every check box for me. Of the movie, the construction of it, every element would be the lowest rating. Okay, so if it was like one out of ten, I I would give every... Honestly, everything in this movie gets a one for me except for gore. Right? That's a four. So my point is, (laughs) I do agree with whatever its rating is on Rotten Tomatoes. That doesn't Uh, mean I hate it. No. no, Or that I'm... I, I'm fucking insane and think it's a slap in the face to the other worst movies ever made with Warwick Davis in them. Yeah. I just think this is a very 
poor film. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd give it, let's just say, out of 10, one star. One out of 10 stars? Wow. One out of 10. Technically, it exists. It's a filmed thing. <laughs> There's a monster in it. There's some... The chick has tiny breasts, but they desperately try to use a push-up bra the whole time to make it look like she doesn't. There's some cool gore. I like some of the ideas, but everything falls flat. I would say, if you're like me and you don't like those kind of leprechaun movies in general, it's not different enough or executed well enough to care. Skip it. Go for a walk. Do anything (laughs) other than watch this. And I hope to God that the next leprechaun movie next week is better than this and uh because if not i might i might kill myself okay there's there's i will say this a little bit of a spoiler lightsabers space marines and a german man who's half robot turns into like a spider scorpion creature yes 